Hello everyone, I have here the LEGO Icons 1969 Chevy Camaro Z28. I bought this set for its retail price of $170 US 170 and built it live over on my Twitch channel where in a typical month I will do about 120 hours of live streaming of Lego builds and on Sundays and Mondays I also built some of these Gundam mech models you see behind me. This set has 1,456 pieces and the build process felt pretty straightforward to me, honestly. There weren't a whole lot of surprises along the way. And maybe one in particular that just felt a little bit magical, one of the connections of the dash up front inside. But for the most part, this was just follow the instructions and stuff comes together and you end up with something that looks just right to me. Yep, I am having to skip straight ahead to the most important thing of this entire review of this entire set. For me, I love how it looks and I think that it looks very, very realistic. It feels like I have practically a model car in front of me and not just a big Lego car. Now, most of the decorations that you'll see are done with stickers, not prints, but I will point out the special prints. They give you two options for how to do the headlights, and I'll show you the other option later on. There are a number of options for a number of things, which you may have seen from the initial release photos. The fenders are a brand new piece, or four of them included in the set here. I tore one off from the other side. It's, uh, it's really, really specialized, and it does attach from the side rather than from the top like traditional Lego fenders typically do. But gosh, does that help the shaping around the wheel a lot, front and back. I kind of want to hate on Lego for making something that's so specialized. It's like a cheat, but it just looks so good. I can't complain, really. This is all drum lacquered here, which I absolutely love. The wheels are fully drum lacquered and they're done consistently and with good production value. This is a BB-9E headpiece and that's on every single one of the wheels here. Definitely really happy about that. And these are gray colored uh, popsicle pieces, just regular light gray. You got a sticker here on the, the side coming down right here. It doesn't go all the way down. Interestingly, I don't know exactly what the purpose of stopping that early was. Um, what else is there to, to really focus on here at first before I start getting into some of the more inner details of this thing? Oh yeah, oh yeah, coming around the back, look at this. That tail light right there, that is a print. That's beautiful. That is a print. It's a one by four tile piece in trans red against white. So there's white behind there, which is what makes it look so nice and clean and bright. You know, it really sends a lot of light back at you. Yeah, sticker right there, sticker right here. There's also an option for a different uh, uh, license plate or number, number plate for this. I like these pieces here, which are the large fireman's ax pieces <laughs> done in just a plain light gray. That's uh, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, they, they're, they're sunk way down in there, but the effect is great. And I think the size of the tailpipes is very good. It's unfortunate though, that we do see that cross shape, that axle shape at the end, rather than something round. I would think that you might want to stick something in there, a little one by one round with the, the vertical uh, bar on top of it, perhaps to, to help with that. All right, let me bring you over to something very important here, the engine. Notice that you do have the raised center section of the, the hood and very, very little in the way of gaps around the, the edges. The entire model is pretty much devoid of gaps in most places that I would be worried about them. Unfortunately, the, the hood doesn't open all that much. I wish that it would open more than that. This might actually be somewhat accurate. I think it should open more than that though. There's another thing there that I need to, to show you. We've got the 302 engine here, if I can get that to focus down underneath. And you know, this is a decent little build. The sticker there is definitely important, but I think this could have used more detail, honestly. It did have to be rather shallow in its depth because of the steering mechanism underneath. This does have working steering. We'll get back to that in just a second, but I think the stickers here are kind of the, the stickers and the, the air cleaner cover or housing are the, the stars of this. Otherwise, not, not the best engine and engine compartments that they've done to date, but I'm very happy that it does have complete inner fenders as well. So you're not seeing too much in the way 
of uh, you know inner build stuff that that doesn't matter to the finished product as far as how it looks and just matters to how it's built and how it works speaking of how it works the front tires are able to be steered from the steering wheel itself but that right there i don't like all those blue colors so you got the blue and you get the medium azure in there i really would rather not see that because i'm very especially very impressed by the steering angle this has a much more significant much more acute steering angle than i've seen from any of these cars to date that looks great it's a really really good look it's hot it makes it it makes the whole car feel more alive and more real and more presence to me but then when i see the blue inside there it just makes me say wait this is this is Lego. It kind of, it breaks the immersion for me to see that. So I think those pieces in there ought to have been swapped out. It's one of those cases where most of this looks pretty good and I don't mind all the many colors that they use on the inside to help us to put this together more easily, especially for folks who are not super, super uh, experienced with advanced Lego builds, but for something that's going to be obvious, yeah, we got to, we got to keep that, keep the, the, the color malaise down. Again, with the minimal gaps, the doors close up pretty well. There's a little bit of warping just in how some of this is, is built, where there's just a little bit of, of this section here that doesn't really want to go in as far as it should. Maybe a little bit of additional uh, massaging of the pieces can help that over time, but it's not too bad. And just generally speaking, this seals up nicely and the door opens respectably well with the additional set of linkages down in there. And to make my job a lot easier here, I am going to just tear the roof off entirely so that you can see the interior of this thing. It makes it so much easier. It's just important for my own personal sanity. Now, you do fully build up the seats. They're a little bit small, but I appreciate that, again, you do have to actually build them up. And they've got a little bit of the correct texture in there and the correct overall positions of the the colors of the two tones in there there's a steering wheel it's relatively vertical but again it does work got your shifter there and center console has a small sticker main console has a small sticker but it's partially hidden behind there not the best but certainly not bad this is fairly consistent on the inside change in the in uh, on top of the tunnel there and this is a nice little touch with the magazine model team magazine just just teasing us for folks who are fans of the old model team uh, theme from, from Lego. You know, the old 18 plus analog of greater plus large vehicles series. Uh, nice, nice uh, shaping around the inside here, around the sides. I think that's a little bit better than normal, a little bit more deluxe. And just generally speaking, I think that this interior is done respectably well. Uh, you know, just it doesn't look like it doesn't look like I'm, I'm seeing a whole lot of how this is built it doesn't look like i'm seeing a whole lot of stuff that i don't want to see in here and this can be built also as a convertible so it's very important that this be a good look i see a little bit of tan down there but i don't even know if that's wrong i don't know if that's incorrect to be able to see that just generally this is a a fairly tight build for the interior. While I have the roof off, I also want to point out the fuzzy dice analogs that are hanging from the rear view mirror. And the rear view mirror itself has a single sticker on it, which is not a mirror. It's not actually reflective. Would have been nice if it was. You know what? This is a good look here too. I wish the hood was able to stay open on its own. It wants to fall. So it kind of needs a, needs a little support to, to keep that from happening. Because a lot of model car collectors and enthusiasts want to have that fully open look so that you can just walk up to the thing and look at the interior detail and marvel at it so it's already starting to fall down on its own so i do recommend putting something under there because all this is good right now and especially if you turn the wheels like like i said it's <laughs> being able to turn the wheels that much it's unusual for lego cars and it looks really good thankfully you can open the trunk up and though it has somewhat of a high deck here, it is well finished. You know, it's all covered up. So you're not seeing a lot of random stuff with the exception of the yellow stripe back here. But I personally have not researched the, the original enough to know if that was actually accurate to exist. But from most angles, it looks fine. Before moving on to some of the option parts, I just want to point out this Technic built splitter at the front or air dam at the front 
which I think looks really nice and has just a proper shape to it. Uh, I'm glad that they didn't rely too much on Technic builds for this set, but this right here is just right. It's a good combination between the two systems. While we're looking at the front, the set has an option for the headlights. So you can have the traditional round headlights or you can have the, the hidden away style. This is a print right here and they give you a pair of those. It takes a little bit of disassembly to swap those and things might not go exactly how you planned. When you start pulling the parts out, you might have to pull out a little bit more than you expected, but it's not a big deal. And I like having this option. At the rear, meanwhile, if you want to represent the state where GM was based and where most of these cars came from, you can swap out to this. That's just another sticker and that's not regular yellow, that's flame yellowish orange or key orange as we like to call it. And then there's the matter of all of these. So along the side here, these are your actual spare parts, your actual leftovers, but then all of this stuff is to change out fundamentally the color scheme of the, the car, changing out the stripes and or filling in the top of the back seats to turn it into the full convertible version. They did a little bit of experimentation with this sort of change with the Mustang. They did a lot more with the Porsche, being able to switch it between the turbo and targa versions. And here, well, this is a great bonus as well. And I feel like this adds a good amount of value in the sense of allowing people to somewhat tune the aesthetics of the car to their own tastes. Also, got the sticker sheet for you. Um, unfortunately, this did not come, even though this is a pretty fancy set, did not come in its special uh, safe spot. So it was all crinkled up. Thankfully, nothing was too damaged here, but Lego needs to not do stuff like that. They need to be sure to be consistent about protecting sticker sheets if they're going to include them at all from damage during transport. Again, the price of this is $170 US. It's 170 euros, at least as the base in Germany and varies from there. 150 British pounds RRP. I feel like those are all fair relative to each other today. And I feel like relative to where we're at on the market in general, across the board with Lego in 2022, the value here is, is okay, it's acceptable. It's a lot of money for this chunk of plastic, but don't forget about that couple handfuls of a uh, couple handfuls of extra parts that are also included, which provide value not only in the form of the amount of plastic that's there, but in the additional experience of being able to customize this to your taste a little bit. I think that those are worth more than just the amount of ABS that's that's there. This does have some specialized stuff. Um, Could have used more prints less stickers in, in this case for something that's this fancy. Really appreciate the drum lacquered parts here. And overall, I'm just happy with this set because ultimately when it's done, even though it didn't have the super mind blowing building techniques, at least to me, to my experience, putting it together of something like the Porsche, did have a, a couple of surprising things. It's, that Those fit together, that fits? Wow, okay, right on. But it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't all clear throughout. It still just turned out so well that I don't even care. I'm happy with what I have here. I'm really happy with it. And if I was an old school Camaro fan, I know I would be just over the moon because this looks so right from so many angles. There are some spots where you look at it where it's not perfect, but then remember it's made of Lego and it's not going to be perfect. I'm okay with that, but I've seen these cars up close a lot from a lot of angles and uh, I'm seeing enough here to be very, very happy with it. Definitely could have used less visible colors through here. Otherwise, <laughs> this is just daggone cool. Love to see it cheaper, absolutely. But if you think that you can stomach the price and you really want this model, I think you'll be very happy with it. So there you go. Those are my thoughts. Thank you very much for watching and I'll talk to you again soon. Yo, yo,